In the previous section, I derived a relationship to show how you could calculate the pressure loss if you knew what the friction factor was for um, particular flow conditions. And in this section, I'm going to show you how to find that friction factor. Okay, so the way that we do that is from something that's called the Moody chart and or the Moody diagram. And uh, there's an image of it shown here on the right hand side. And I'll just kind of talk you through it. So um, if you remember from the dimensionless, uh, sorry, from the Buckingham Pi theorem, we showed that this um, this friction factor is a function of Reynolds number, okay, which is a non-dimensionless group, and also the relative pipe roughness, which is roughness divided by the pipe diameter. So the way this chart works is um, you have your friction factors um, on the left-hand side. So you find your Reynolds number, and then noticing that this is a log scale, and I'll go through some examples later on. And then you look up uh, your relative pipe roughness, and these lines are lines of relative pipe roughness for the, the values on the, here, on the right here. And you see where the two values intersect, and then you read off your friction factor, which you can then use your, in your equation. And this chart is split up into three or four um, sections, depending on how you count them. Um, so you've got your laminar uh, region, your critical region, and your turbulent um, uh, region. But that's split up into a partially and a fully um, turbulent region as well. And I'll just talk about these in turn. So if we look at the, the laminar flow, which we remember is um, characterized by Reynolds number less than 2000. And if you recall from um, the lecture on laminar um, frictional flow, we said that the, we could show that the pressure loss is given by this relationship. Now, um, if we combine that with the darcy Weisbach equation, which is this one here, which we derived at the start of this lecture. So we know that the pressure loss is equal to this general formula but for laminar conditions, it's um, equal to this. Then if we rearrange these two to find um, the friction factor. We see that we end up with, um, after we substitute in velocity in the areas and everything cancels out, we end up with a, a value of um, 64 over Reynolds number. So you can see that this is a straight line as shown on the plot. And so for laminar flow, in terms of when we're trying to find the pressure loss, we can either find it from this relationship, or we can find it using the darcy Weisbach equation, but just substituting the friction factor as 64 over the Reynolds number. So we can do it um, either way. It's more complicated for turbulent flow. Now in this um, critical region between um, a Reynolds number of two and 3,000, we're not sure whether the, the flow is laminar or turbulent. It's in this critical sort of transitional uh, region. As I said, the turbulent region can be broken up into um, two sub um, regions. So one is the partially um, turbulent region and the other is fully turbulent. So on the plot here, you can see that I've got the, um, the um, partially turbulent uh, region, region um, highlighted. And in this area, if you look at the, the gradient of the, the lines of relative pipe um, roughness or sorry, more important friction factor, you can see that the friction factor is dependent on both the Reynolds number and the relative pipe roughness. So you look up your roughness, but this is changing, the friction factor is changing with um, Reynolds number. Okay, and the transition from partially to fully turbulent line is um, from partially to fully turbulent flow is when this line is no longer dependent on Reynolds number. So if we look at the fully turbulent um, region, then you can see in this area, <laughs> for each relative pipe roughness, this line is pretty much horizontal. So what that's basically indicating is that it's independent of Reynolds number. So if we look at this relative pipe roughness here of um, 0 0.01, you can see that between around 10 to the 5 and um, Reynolds number of 10 to the 5 and 10 to the 8, you have a constant friction factor. Okay, regardless of where it is. So it's relatively independent. So as I say, it's dependent only on relative roughness. And we, as you'll see later, we can take advantage of this fact when we're trying to solve um, some of the different problems. Okay, so how do we actually find the friction factor from the chart? Now I've talked through um, 
how to do the these values. So one last thing I wanted to mention, sorry, is um, sometimes you'll be given the um, the roughness of the um, the pipe in the question, and sometimes you won't. If you're not, then if you know the material, then you can see here on the chart that for um, you know, a range of common materials, there are typical values of roughness, which you can read directly off the chart. Okay, so let's say in this example, well, um, for this system, we have a Reynolds number of 3 times 10 to the 4, and a relative roughness of 0 0.01. So how do we find the friction factor? Well, the first thing is we look up the Reynolds number on here. So this is 10, 1 times 10 to the 4, 2 times 10 to the 4, 3 times 10 to the 4. And we also look up our relative um, pipe roughness, which is this line here. So remember, this is a line of constant pipe roughness. So we just need to find a point where these two intersect. So we keep following this line till we get to this point here. So that is the point, the middle of those crosshairs, is the point where those two lines intersect. We then read off on the left-hand scale the friction factor, which in this instance is 0 0.04. Okay? Now, it won't always be that um, you're exactly between, um, you're exactly on a line. So, um, for example, here, the Reynolds number is um, fairly easy. It's 4 times 10 to the 6. So we're on this line. That's okay. But um, here we have a um, relative pipe roughness of 0 0.003. And if we look over here, we've got 0 0.002 and 0 0.005, but no 0 0.003. So the trick here is we have to interpolate between the two. Um, so, but you've got to do it at the Reynolds number because you can see, you know, the gap kind of narrows as the Reynolds number reduces. So you've got to interpolate between the two. So it is a bit tricky, um, but um, 0 0.003 is around here. And if we look at where those two intersect, it's around that point there. Then we read that on the left-hand side and we'd read off our friction factor, which would be around... Um, 0 0.026, um, something like that. Um, so that that's how we do it. Now, in those instances, or particularly in the last example, because we were interpolating between two lines, it was quite um, difficult to determine, um, you know, a, a, an accurate um, friction factor. But you, you, in those instances, you might be better off using this equation. Um, so this is for the turbulent um, zone in general. So the friction factor, and I won't read it out because you can see it's a fairly complicated relationship, um, but the friction factor is equal to this function of Reynolds number and um, pipe roughness. And basically this describes, um, this is the equation for each of those lines on the Moody chart. So if you're interpolating between, you know, different Reynolds number, different pipe roughness, it might be better to use this equation. Notice that for the fully turbulent re uh, region, there is no Reynolds number in here, okay, because of the fact that the Reynolds number, uh, sorry, the friction factor becomes independent of Reynolds number um, in the fully turbulent region.